Good day, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to Pace IT's session on a summary of types of attacks, part two. Today we're going to be talking about sniffer and password attacks, and then we're going to conclude with a brief discussion on some common social engineering attacks. There is a whole lot of information to impart, so let's go ahead and begin this session. Of course, I'm going to begin by talking about sniffer and password attacks. Quite often, an attacker will use a sniffer type of attack in order to determine what other type of attack to use on a network. Sniffer attacks use specialized software to examine the network for vulnerabilities. That software may conduct a port scan, which is looking for open or vulnerable ports that can be exploited or the software may be used to examine network packets in order to determine what applications, protocols, and services are in use on the network, thus revealing some other vulnerabilities. In addition to that, the sniffer application may combine both a port scan and the packet capture capabilities, thus increasing the odds of the hacker finding a vulnerability. One common port scanning attack is the Xmas scan attack or the Christmas tree scan attack. With the Xmas scan, each packet sent by the scanner has three of the possible six flags set. This lights up that packet like a Christmas tree, but it lights up the three specific flags to increase the chances of getting a return, but it also helps to keep that scan from being discovered. Unfortunately, end-user passwords often present an attacker with easy entry into the network. Even when network administrators try to create a strong password policy, end-users often attempt to create easy-to-remember passwords. Usually, if the password is easy to remember, it is easy to crack. As an illustration, in studies conducted on passwords, some of the most common passwords that are used include one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The actual word password, QWERTY, as in a QWERTY keyboard, Q-W-E-R-T-Y, and let me in. These all are consistently some of the top passwords that are found, and they do not represent much of a challenge to the hacker. Attackers also have some other tools and attacks that they can use in a password attack. Let's talk about those tools and attacks that are used in a password attack. There is a dictionary attack. The attacker uses specialized software that contains a list of the most popular usernames and a list of all of the words in a specific language. The program runs through all of the possible combinations in an attempt to find one that works. Then there's the brute force attack. An attacker uses a password cracking application that mathematically calculates every possible password combination. Brute force attacks take a large amount of computing power and time in order to be successful, but given enough computing power and time, they will succeed. As a rainbow table may speed up the process of a brute force attack, it is often combined with the brute force attack. The rainbow table contains a list of all the possible characters and combinations that can be used to create a password. And then there's the hybrid attack. It uses a combination of the dictionary attack and the brute force attack. And finally, there is the birthday attack. It's an attempt to duplicate a hashed value that is used to authenticate a user or system. The attacker uses a program that hashes data in an effort to recreate a known hashed value. If enough data is input, eventually the hashed value will be duplicated and then the attacker can be authenticated. With that covered, let's move on to some common social engineering attacks. First up is the phishing attack the hacker typically casts out a broad net of emails that appear to be from a trusted source, as in from a well-known bank or from a company like Google. These emails request that a user click on a hyperlink. The hyperlink connects to a malicious website that looks similar to the trusted website, 
and when the user inputs his or her credentials as requested, the attacker then steals the user's credentials and they end up with a set of valid credentials that they can use to perform fraud. Spear phishing is related to the phishing attack. The attacks are very similar, but spear phishing is more directed. The hacker's email appears to come from an even more trusted source, as in it might appear to come from the management of the organization that the user works for, or it might appear to come from a trusted coworker. Farming attacks are also a common type of social engineering attack. The attacker uses DNS poisoning to redirect traffic from a legitimate site to a different or malicious website. And finally, there's vishing. This is using the telephone to perform a phishing attack. The attacker impersonates a trusted source, or they attempt to impersonate a trusted source. Vishing attacks are awfully hard to pull off but they are successful on occasion. Now that concludes this session on a summary of types of attacks, part two. We began by talking about sniffer and password attacks, and then we concluded with a brief discussion on some common social engineering attacks. On behalf of Pace IT, thank you for watching this session, and I hope to do another one soon.